Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Jeff and today we're going to have some fun playing magic and we are playing some Almighty Pump today with Almighty Brushwag, one mana, one one with Trample. And the best thing about this is just the art, the name, Almighty Brushwag. I just feel like a wizard just gave us, handed us a meme and I never actually played it. I never actually like have done much with this with this card because it's always been eh, just a one mana, one man, one one. It has that Trample, it can pump itself, that's cool. But this is like a good limited card, but otherwise not really that great, typically. But I decided to go ahead and try to build a deck where we can utilize Almighty Brushwag's ability, as well as just kind of a few other cards that came in with um, the, the arena cards that, that came out with uh, the different starter decks that we've had. So Feral Roar, Feral Roar, kind of like a Titanic Growth, except it's a sorcery, not an instant. I always have to remember that because for me, I get, I get into the work of things and think all of my cards are instants and so therefore I can just cast this at instant speed and I'm probably going to miss that up at one point here during the video but I'll try to not to anyway it's just another pump spell for the deck we have a ton of pump spells that can ultimately just get small 1-1 one, one creatures or even zero cost creatures in for damage and hitting for tons and tons and tons and tons of damage and so that is the idea of the deck we only have a few creatures we have gilded goose we have wildwood tracker and stone cold serpent and these four creatures, or 16 creatures in our deck, uh, we'll, we will just be pumping up like crazy as much as we possibly can, hitting it for damage and getting in. I was initially going to be playing Fling with the Almighty Fling is kind of the idea I was going for. Ram Through basically becomes a Fling though because it has Trample. If we have enough mana, and this is one of the issues, part of the reason I was playing Gilded Goose, I even have the Carotid in here for a little bit as well. Uh, because it's standard 2021, we don't have as many pump spells in creatures as, as I'd like. Uh, I don't want to be putting in a bunch of like ramp spells to try to get the, enough mana to where we can cast Titanic Rose and Flings and still get in for damage, uh, which is where Fling really becomes useful. With Ram Through though, we get to kill creatures, we get to get some damage through to face, and we get to uh, still pump the creature and be swinging in. So I think that ultimately Ram Through will kind of fulfill that, that slot of, of fling pretty well into the deck. Uh, and so that's the idea of the deck. We have Almighty Brushwag for Trample. We all have Stone Cold Serpent for Trample, which will work well with Ram Through. Everything else just gets pumped. We'll get in for damage. Uh, Wood, Wildwood Trekker, as long as we have any other creature in our deck, becomes a 2-2 two -two for us as we're attacking. And so it's just a good, a good one drop for our deck. Uh, also bring in a few other pump spells that you don't typically see. I was initially kind of trying to make this like almost a popper deck. And so I think we only have, um, everything is common except for the Gilded Goose and Stone Cold, Stone Cold Serpent. But I mean, if you're gonna be beating down with Brushwag, I mean, beating down with the Goose is even more fun. And Stone Cold Serpent just fit too well to kind of take it out. And so if you guys wanna change these out to some other stuff. So this is half a challenge of trying to make sure that I built a deck that was built around Almighty Brushwag, as well as I actually think this deck can win games. This is one of those decks where it's like, okay, you're crazy explosive, you're gonna get some game wins, you're gonna you know, either completely destroy someone or completely fail. And I kind of like playing those decks personally. It's one of those where it's like, it's just fun. That's what we're here to, that's why we play Magic. If you didn't know, it's for fun. And, and I think that this deck could actually be really fun. So we're gonna go ahead and try it out, test it out in some gameplay. So let's go ahead and just jump right into it. Wish me luck, and here we go. All right, up against Kalamax. We have creatures, we have pump spells, we shall keep it. I actually really like the Rose Thorn Halberd with the Gilded Goose. Just something that we can get onto it, keep it hitting in for damage every turn. And you can pay five to equip it later on. This is part of the reason that there's not as many of this in our deck as some other things. Uh, but it is just a consistent pump spell. You don't have to cast it twice. That's really nice. Uh, so let's actually just go for the other Gilded Goose. Um, Halberd. Uh, we can get a really big Stone Cold Serpent next turn. That might be pretty nice here. But for now, just get in for two, down to 18, pass the turn. I want to see what they're playing before I spend too much onto the Stone Cold Serpent. Like, if it's a Shadow of this guy, not going to be super fun. It's Mill. Ooh, interesting. Very interesting. All right, so I can go X5 on the Stone Cold Serpent. Uh, and we actually have a decent chance, like if they play a creature, the ram through may actually, get, may, may actually get them here. So not hitting with the Gilded Goose, a little bit awkward. Let's go ahead and go for the five. Wait, why is, why does five not work? Okay, here. So 
Shouldn't I? Where's the auto pay? Normally that's there. Maybe because there's two different ones I have to hit. I don't know. At first they're like, okay, they're just playing something janky. And then Stone Cold Serpents, I mean, it's still janky, but it's like a legit threat. So they had to reassess that from. I always love whenever you play something fun and people like look at you like, wait a minute, what just happened there? Okay, okay. Tap land, two cards left, revitalize. So some life gain going for him. Not too shabby. Let's go ahead and get uh, Satessin training onto... I can go for the other Gilded Goose just to force through damage on every single thing that we have. I could also just use this to um, create food for us. Get a little bit more ramp for maybe a potential uh, Stone Cold Serpent in the future. Swing it for eight. That is a decent amount of damage. Pass the turn. Shatter this guy. Okay. Create some food. We get to draw another card. Another land wouldn't be too shabby here. I'll take it. X5 again. Worst case scenario, we can at least equip this here. We do have Ranger's Guile, so like even a land is nice so we can protect it maybe a bit. This isn't my first time being the hero. Hey, draws a card. Um, so I can guarantee kill to fairy here, or I can force through as much damage as possible. Uh, let's go ahead and just equip here, see if I can force uh, to fairy to, to uh, phase it out now. All right, so now it's a fairy is no longer an issue for a little bit of time. They, they can draw cards, that is a deal, but we can also just get in for eight points of damage. So we're gonna do that. Down to five. And Ranger's Guile, by the way, that was something I forgot in the intro. This is one of the main reasons that this deck can actually work, is Ranger's Guile is so good. Uh, this is so bad, though. This is just a Teferi's Tutelage is like the only way to really mill and make sweet Oblivion, I guess. Which is... I, I feel like an interesting card for a mill deck. It's really not that powerful at all. You can recast it. But I would just play full on control. Teferi and Teferi's Tutelage just by themselves probably end up being enough. As long as you just play full on control. That's another deck I haven't actually played yet. That could be pretty fun. Mm. Uh oh. We're in trouble. This is like... We have just enough of a chance to win here. That I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna scoop just yet, but... The amount of chance, like the, the likelihood here is probably like 25% chance. So we're definitely, it's not quite the time to be scooping yet. We haven't seen enough of their deck just yet. All right, Aegis in sight, that is two draws a turn. Draw two, discard one. Yeah, at this point, we're there's no way we can actually come back. Right, let's draw one more card. We have the almighty brushwag. <laughs> oh, is that good enough? Unfortunately, they don't have any creatures for us to ram through with. Um, we're going to go ahead and equip the halberd here. We have lethal next turn. Uh, it's a fairy is annoying. They can he can cycle through or uh, Phase out again. I'd much rather him phase out now than on our attack step. So this is perfect. Yeah, please do. That's great. And now they can't target him with Banishing Light. That, that actually is like one of the worst things they could have done there was phase out with Teferi. I, that may actually uh, ensure our victory. We have seven mana. So one more land and we actually get to pump Brushwag by himself. Teferi's Tutelage. Okay. They're holding up something here. Hopefully not a removal spell. Um, they can't play another Teferi because they tapped down all of their islands instead. Why, why would you do that? Draws a card, draws two, discards one. Two more draws, we mill six, or sorry, four. That's fine. So either a land or a pump spell, which I mean, our deck is kind of full of those. We have to hit one of them. All right, ram through. 
I think we got there. So pump here. Oh, it's so close. Okay, so Tess in training. It already has trample, but we just need to draw a card here and get its power a little bit higher. With Ram through, we can do some interesting stuff. If it's a land, I think we still get there. Okay, land. Land is actually great. So pump Almighty Brushwag. Two, land, two mana still left. Ram through. Secret Keeper. They take one. We get hit in for five. Did we get there? <laughs> Teferi's not big enough. Teferi can't do it any do anything. <laughs> yes, please. Uh, they could maybe somehow kill their own secret keeper. All right, they draw a card. We mill some more cards. That's fine. Down to 20, 22. Did we? Oh my gosh, did we get there? <laughs> okay, kill them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> The Brushwag! Almighty br Everyone nil to Almighty Brushwag. <laughs> oh, what a game. 25% chance and we came through. All right, up against Froth's Cake and we will keep this. We have a Brushwag. Life is great. I know I should be playing Golden Goose first, but I mean, come on. We came to play the Brushwag and I'm going to do it. <laughs> All right, let's go Satessin Trading. I I should have played the Guild of the Goose first. <gasps> no. Rude. Rude. We're having against people that are playing Stern Dismissal, which actually pretty good here. Creature or Enchantment. Not too shabby at all. So I, what I could do is I could play Gilded Goose and see if I can get a combat trick to kill a Sprite Dragon just to give us more time to try to play through. I'm not sure if we're going for time, though. Nice. Wonder just had a good game. Are they really going to time me out? Pona is timing out, which is rather annoying. Ranger's Guile actually helps us out here quite a bit. I, I'm going to play it out until they are officially timed out, but this game may be a quick one or a long one. All right, Pona is looking like they're going to be timing out here. Yay! Alrighty! We won! I always try to get the victory out of people timing out, even though we're not in ranked, just because I never want to give them the satisfaction. There's some people that will jump in, play a little bit, and then time you out just to get their daily wins. I won't let them have it. Mm -mm. No way. Not in my house. Alright, up against Agids. Bring it on, Agids. Keep this. Opponent mulligan down to five cards. That's a good sign, usually. <clears throat> um, what are we playing on the next turn? I so I actually think I go Wildwood Tracker here first, and then Gilded Goose br uh, Brushwag on the next turn into either Big Stone Cold Serpent. Just go really wide. Hopefully, there's no board wipes. We'll see if we need to play around it or not. We may need to. Pack leader. All right. So up against the Dagos. All right, Guild Goose. Tack in. Make it a 2 2. Yeah, not going to want to trade there. And Brushwag. Mmm, got him. <laughs> I do think that like adding Gem Razor to the deck as well would be pretty nice. It it has an effect that creates trample, and it's a pump spell that stays on the board. So like honestly, Gem Razor is like the best three meta pump spell that you could have in a deck like this. Kills things that are oh, okay. This is Winota. This is the Winota deck. Yeah, no blocks. That's fine. We'll take our beats. Hound Master. All 
All right, let's go. So test and training onto tracker. If they have Winota for the next turn, we're just dead. So like, I'm debating if I just want to like how aggressive I want to be going here. Just with the tracker, I think this time around. Down to 15. Pass the turn, hold up Titanic Growth as a block. We'll see if they have Winota. I mean, they mulligan down to five. That's either because they finally had a hand that they could actually keep or... We'll see. This could also just be... Hmm. See, so I can block the Ginger Brute. I could kill the Houndmaster here with the Ranger's Guile. Titanic Growth gets it up to a 5-5. Five, five. We know they're going to play some blockers. I think one, one Growth is fine here for that. Okay, down to 16. Keeping our board intact. Watchdog is probably their better play here. Stone Cold Serpent X2. Holding up mana. I, I'm going to feign um, misreading here that I don't know that uh, the Stone Cold Serpent has reach. Just try to get another easy kill here. So acting like I don't know Stone Cold Serpent can block the Gilded Goose. Oh, they just go for the trade. Interesting. All right, that works too. Fast turn. So because it's Winota, getting rid of these smaller creatures is actually really important. We have a couple of really good pump spells. If we hit land next turn, we just pump, pump, hit in for a bunch and a half. Okay, down to 14. They're down to 13, though. We still have our creatures. We have the brush wag, so life is good. All right, Gilded Goosey. Um, man, if they hit land and they do have Winota, we're, we could be in trouble here. I think I just hit for five in the air. Okay, down to eight past the turn. I am definitely missing the one mana uh, gigantic growth. Wait, is that in the format? Did I miss it somehow? I don't think so. Down to nine. Alpine Houndmaster. land we have to not be dead that's important so i can hit in for five with uh putting the titanic growth onto i guess yeah it doesn't actually matter to go there all right so swinging with gilly goose titanic growth can't block down to three any pump spell kills them um gain life or put out stone cold serpent i guess we put out stone cold serpent and just really hope they don't have Winota for here, because then we're just most likely dead. Swinging in really aggressively. Uh, all we have to do is stay alive. Ember Cleave could be an issue. Um, okay, block, block. Unfortunately, Brushwag does have to go away. Or do we, do we need a secondary creature to be able to swing in with the pump spell? Brushwag can pump by himself. All right, we're going to take the gamble that they could have the Ember Cleave. They did not have it. Oh, Vigilance as well. Forgot about the Vigilance. Alpine Houndmaster. All right. Do we get the pump spell? No, that's not a pump spell. All right, Wildwood Tracker. Um, we're going to keep swinging with the Goose. We can still stay alive one more turn. I was debating on just making a food token since pump spells are all we really need, but we'll see. 
This lets us win with Ranger's Guile as well. I'm gonna gain life now, so I don't do my maths wrong. Oh, we're just barely dead. So the Kerr has can hit in for too much. I I needed to block with Gilded Goose there as well, or create another food token. Oh well, that's game. They got us. We needed a pump spell off the top, and we got we got a Welder Tracker instead. Drats. That's okay. Next one. I like this guy's name. Up against Emra Cool. Nice. Uh, double Welder Tracker. Also nice. Pass turn. And Ranger's Guile. Like, that's the perfect draw for this hand right now, so... And the best next best thing would be land for the next turn. Okay, down to 18. Okay, pass to my turn. And there's the land. Dude, life is good. All you have to do is draw what you want. Uh, let's see. We get the ram through on the next turn. Daxos can get pretty annoying, though. If we hit land, we can Titanic Growth, ram through, get in for tons of damage, though. So let's just go ahead and swing in with these two fellas. If they want to trade off, that's fine. Or we can pump. Okay, down to 14, Stone Cold Serpent, X3. Hallowed Priest, gain some life, pump the dude. Selfless Savior, gain some life, pump the dude, making this guy a bit more massive. And, unfortunately, this Selfless Savior is really annoying here. Ooh, that's actually really bad. The land is really nice, though. Okay, Titanic Growth. I'm going to have to force something to happen here. So, Creature I Control, hit the Hollow Priest. They sack self savior, which actually gains them life. It goes up to a 4-4. Four, four. Swinging with the Trampley Dude. So it, this actually doesn't block any, any damage whatsoever because it's already been dealt damage for the turn. So all the excess damage still goes through. And that's the reason why I played it. I was trying to get as much damage through to their face as I possibly could. With the amount of life gain this deck will have, though, we'll see if we can actually actually win this. Oh, that's a bad draw. All right, pass the turn. I, I think we played the early game as best we could. Yeah, Elspeth, two more life. All the priest gets massive. No blocks. We're left with the guys that don't have Trample. Daxus has all the toughness in the world. Feral Roar isn't good without Trample. Pass the turn. And I think that's just game. And this this is what I was talking about at the beginning, where like this deck, you either just, you get them, they don't have the right things, and it's explosive enough that you can just win the game. Um, I tried to go all in on trying to get the, instead of trying to kill Daxos, I just went in for uh, trying to get as much damage dealt as possible and it ended up being the wrong play. So that's fine. We're dead. Nothing gets us out of that board right there. <laughs> Not in this deck. <laughs> all right, up against Akinis. And yeah, I guess we keep this. I know Gilded Goose isn't the best card to be pumping. At the same time, though, it's it's flying and evasive, and so, yeah, we keep. All right, Temple of Epiphany. Insatiable Appetite. All right, we have all the things to actually get in for lots of damage with Gilded Goose. Uh, let's go for Satessin Training. Draw, draw more cards. That's good. Ram through is actually pretty nice too. We can end up making this really big in a couple turns. 
All right, please keep our Gilded Goose alive. No shocks, no nothing. All right, Wildwood Tracker. Just so we have another creature to be pumping. Um, swinging with Goose, Titanic Growth. Hidden for five down to 14 past the turn. This is such a silly deck. I love it. <laughs> Keep something on top. Uh, they drew a lot of cards. Do you have a shock now? All right. Let's just really hope they don't have another one, too. Play land. Have to play the goose to get the pump on tracker. I never know. I guess we're, we're all in on going for the pump, right? So swing with tracker. I want to see if they go for some sort of event. I, they're holding up some sort of response, I think. We're, we're in for it. Insatiable appetite. Sacrifice of food. Two mana plus five plus five. They're letting it resolve. All right, sweet. Down to seven. If we find another one of those, we're, we're in good shape. <laughs> okay. 80 pump spell. Uh, not any pump spell, but pump spells can get us there. Oh, Stormdrath. All right. All right. All right. Oh, no. Come on, deck. <laughs> we got him to seven. And they had answers. We can't play once they have answers. You know how that goes. Oh, this is... This is, uh... Is it... I bet you anything Teferi's Tutelage is in here somewhere. Oh no, not another land. We only run 22 lands. Six lands is definitely too much for this deck. Ops, okay. I like the way that this reads, where it's only if you draw a card, except for the first one, you draw in each of your draw steps. So it's not the each one in each turn, but yeah. There is the tutelage. How many of our creatures do we mill? All right. Ugh, for the love deck. All right. That's probably game. They get to untap and have so much card draw. I mean, already. Yeah, frantic inventory. Draw a ton and a half cards. <laughs> yeah, resolve all. I might crack the food already. Almighty Brushwag on tap, just mocking us. Ah, oh, and the opt. So this this is my rule get when I play against Mill, is you you have to let them actually kill you with Mill, um, to an extent. Because Mill doesn't always get to win with actually milling people. And so I like to let them have it. I like to let them do it. It's just fun. Another tutelage. Yeah, this is sweet. They got the combo kill. This does seem like a pretty decent deck where, like, if you can hit the Storm's Wrath on turn four, and then you go... Um, you know, you have to take a turn to actually get the Ageless Insight out. That is part of the hardest part of this deck is Ageless Insight is part of the reason this deck is doing so well. But you have to take a complete turn off to do so. You can do that. It can also completely kill you. All right. So, yeah, we dead. I think we still we end up with four cards left at the end of this. Yeah, four cards left. Can you draw another card with how many cards you've drawn? <laughs> Cathartic Reunion. So the, the downside of Ageless Insight, unless you have enough of the tutelages, whatever, you end up drawing so many of your own cards throughout the game that it's good. Yep, good game. I, I have to actually let them mill. That's how this works.
And go to my turn. Draw the card and... Oh, he has to discard all of his hands. There we go. Good game. <laughs> oh, man. I I enjoy dying to mill. It makes me happy. Someone did it. Good job. Way to be. Up against now a Weezer. And, uh, well, again, no creatures. There's the Brushwag. Okay, this time was all creatures, nothing else. Which is cool, I suppose. Okay, drop a forest. Uh, with this hand, we can go really, really aggressive. Getting up to four mana to be pumping the brushwags could be pretty nice. Just the pump there. But we have a very aggro start. So, tracker number two, brushwag. They can't. They don't have any interactions, so I'm not going to worry about waiting to play these after the attack. And we have to play them early anyway. Dude, I love playing Brushwag so much. <laughs> Put a side ring over it. They're really playing Brushwag? Yep. Better believe it, my friend. <laughs> Going down. <laughs> uh, Alright. Down to 18. What you playing? This feels like a Winota deck. Fill it in my bones. All right, so test and training onto Wildwood Tracker. This feels like a removal spell, but it's the best play. All right. I could have put it onto the brush rag to like force them to kill the less good one, but it already had trample. And we get not as much good stuff out of it. That's fine. Uh, hold on to combat. Let's see here. Attack in. Not <laughs> We're gonna keep damage rolling even if it's using ram throughs on creatures like that. Without land right now, it's like we can't really do much better than that. Titanic growth is nice though. Go to blocks. Uh, I think I'm going to play out the Stone Cold Serpent. I'm fine with the trade-off there. Again, we're keeping him off Winota. This goes as a 2-2. Two -two. And then we can Titanic Growth on the best creature after this. Down to 11. Booyah. Man, dropping that forest to the bottom. Now we haven't hit another one. All right, down to six. If we hit land, we kind of create a checkmate point here, unless they can board wipe or something. Land, give me land. Oh, deck, not a land. Uh, we can still get like a Ranger's Guile or something though. Put this onto Brushwag in case they had a shock. Okay, we hit the land. Sing with Stone Cold Serpent. Swing here, force a trade, but I don't think that necessarily helps us out. Okay, just with the Stone Cold Serpent. Okay, now we have Pump Spell for either of these guys, or just Pump. Bosri's Lieutenant, okay. Gets a counter. Oh, we're so close. So close. Definitely Winota. Um... So four, 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 four. I guess what we do is we just make sure we kill Bajru's Lieutenant, right? That's the best play. Get in for damage. Make sure his Lieutenant dies. Lieutenant Diane. Oh, okay. They have to block the two Brushwags. They have to. <laughs> All right, that works. Sweet. I, I thought we were gonna have to survive for a couple more turns or something like that, but dude, people cannot handle the brush wag. The brush wag, you done got wagged. Brushed? Brush wagged? 
All right, we have some interesting plays here with this hand up against uh, this guy. I, I'm definitely keeping this. Um, I could go with the uh, Wildwood Tracker first here, which Rose Thorn Halberd with Wildwood Tracker makes him a, it'll be what, a 4-2 right away, 4-3 on turn two. That's a really good attacker that we can give protection. Um, getting the Rose Throne Halberd onto Almighty Brushwag, though, or even to the Guild of Goose to where it's more evasive is nice. So yeah, we go for the tracker, pass the turn. I, I do think that's a better play. Brushwag, we can kind of hold on for the later game when we get to four mana so it can pump itself anytime. All right, let's go. Gilded Goose, Halbred. Um, yeah, so we have four, three when it attacks or in combat. Good turn. Down to 16. Conclave Mentor, they can make a really big board really quick. Uh, the Gilded Goose might be the what wins us the game now. We shall see. A Conclave Mentor number two. Swings in, no blocks. Okay, down to 18. Anything that creates counters is <laughs> so good now. Um, man, do we just go for as much damage as possible? I can Titanic Growth. We hit in for eight. All right, we'll see if they trade off. Nope, no blocks. Let's go ahead and Titanic Growth. Double Almighty, Almighty Bushrag. No. Down to eight, past the turn. So test and training, some, some way to give him trample so that the ram through can actually become a fling spell would be really nice. Hitting lands would be really nice too. That is a lot of Conclave Mentors. Holy crap. There's so many. We'll see if they forget. Uh, Wildwood Tracker, um, once it's attacks or blocks, it gets a pump. Wildwood Scourge, <laughs> yep, up to a 4-4. Four, four. No reach though, that's nice. All right, so we actually take this. Uh, we can ram through and still kill this guy once we go to attacks. Um, so hold down to combat. Attacking with Wildwood Tracker. Ram through. See if you want to block with the Conclave Mentor now. Takes it. That's risky. All right, play the Brushwag. Pass the turn. Five mana. They can make something really massive, but if they Keep swinging in with the Conclave Mentors, they won't have blockers. Uh, the scary part here is actually if they start stonewalling, uh, like with a Stone Cold Serpent especially here, it would be terrible for us. It'd become an 8-8. Hunter's Edge. All right, well. Ranger's Guile. So that creature does damage equal to... That's actually a really interesting spell. So put a counter onto target creature you control. Then that creature deals damage equal to its power to target you, you don't coast. You can so actually... You can have that kill something by itself. I've never thought of that before. That's brilliant. Completely and absolutely brilliant. All right, so we win with the Gilded Goose, right? Yes! <laughs> oh man, this is this is a fun deck whenever it goes off. <laughs> I I enjoy playing just fair magic sometimes. <laughs> We're just like, yeah, we got you with a bunch of limited cards. Take that, booyah. Pump is is always explosive and aggressive, and that can sometimes work.
All right, so that's it for today with Almighty Pump. Uh, I'm kind of just playing the decks that I don't typically play because I'm just really excited for Zendikar Rising. I'm so excited for it to come. We're just two days away. Uh, so on Wednesday, today is Monday that this will be coming out. Um, Wednesday, I will be starting out by putting out Zendikar Rising content. Um, I'm, I have access to the early pre-release event, which is sponsored by Wizards of the Coast. I have to say that or else I get in trouble. And, uh, and yeah, so I'm going to be putting out a video for Wednesday, maybe a little bit later than normal. Um, and that'll be good. It'll be fun. Then we're going to be doing Zendikar Rising stuff from then on. So just today, tomorrow, and then Zendikar Rising stuff. So let's go ahead. Uh, sorry. I was going to say jump into the gameplay. We already did that. You guys, if you like the video, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much. And bye-bye.